And welcome to today's currency call. It is Tuesday, the 22nd of uh, February already, 2022. And I hope everyone is having a great start to the day or you're having a great evening, depending on where you are in the world. And thanks again for joining us live to all the LCMS Trading Club members as well. And feel free, guys, to, to ask questions if you are watching the live stream. If you want to get on the live stream and into the LCMS Traders Club, make sure you visit the LCMS uh, website uh, at the Jindal Thai site just to get subscribed. We are taking on new members as well. Now, we have a little bit going on today. We've got the Euro USD, Euro Pound in focus with Jin. We've also got the Bank of England Monetary Policy Meeting uh, tomorrow. So there'll be a preview by Gimme, and I'll be going through the DXY. But before we go, into all of what is going on today, I will just share the disclaimer and I will read it out. So any information shared in this video is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speakers. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades as we will be sharing trade ideas. So that is an important point to remember. And we will get things started off with Gim Hong here, just going through the Bank of England meeting uh, tomorrow. So thank you, Gimme, over to you now. All right, thanks, Scotty. Okay, so the Bank of England, okay, will be, um, well, actually um, the Bank of England's chief, okay, Governor Bailey, and probably like a couple of his colleagues, okay, the other NPC members will be um, testifying, well, in a way testifying, there'll be like a, MPR, okay, Monetary Policy Report hearings tomorrow at 17.30 GMT plus 8. I have no idea why it's at 17.30 GMT plus 8 because in the past, it has been around like, it, has, it was well, carried out right, around 1900, yeah, 1900 or 1930 GMT plus 8. But this time around, they well, hold it at 17.30. Um, just pay attention to it because the time may actually change, okay? Subject to change from time to time as well, okay? So um, this hearing, okay, will be on the most recently released um, quarterly uh, monetary policy report, okay? That was released earlier on this month, okay? When the Bank of England met, all right? So just a recap, a um, couple of weeks ago when they meet, um, you know, the Bank of England hiked interest rates by 0.25%, okay? And if you were to look at the votings, five of them actually voted for a 0.25% hike. And four of them actually voted for a 0.5% um, hike, okay? Which is, well, there was a close, it was a close one, I would say, okay? If let's say only four voted for 0.25% and five voted for 0.5, okay? Then we will be seeing, well, a very, very, very strong strengthening, okay? Strong strengthening of the British pound, okay? But um, nonetheless, okay, it's still good, okay? It's still good to know that, um, you know, there was a unanimous vote for the rate hike, okay? And pretty much close of half of it, okay, actually voted for a more hawkish hike of 0.5%, all right? And then also there's a unanimous vote on <clears throat> um, for the Bank of England to start unloading bonds, okay, by seizing reinvestment of maturing assets, okay? Um, not sure when it was, when it's going to take place, okay? Um, probably more discussion will be required, okay, in the upcoming one or two meetings. And, well, they may actually start it as soon as the next meeting in mid-March, okay? So, right now, we get, well, very, very hawkish news, well, hawkish tone from the Bank of England, okay, as of the February's um, monetary policy meeting, all right? So, tomorrow's hearing, okay, a testimony will be on this report, okay? And um, the report also did um, highlighted the economic projections, okay, on the UK, all right? So it's gonna be like a GDP inflation and unemployment figures and things like that, okay? I went through it um, back in the 
post BOE um, coverage the other time. All right, and I would say that the economic projections that they have well, released this time round, okay, for this for the most recent quarter, was pretty um, hawkish as well. Okay, so all is good. All right, which is why we are all expecting interest rate more interest rate hike coming in from the Bank of England. Okay, so tomorrow during the hearing, um, unlikely, okay, there's going to be any um, surprises coming in. Okay, um, if they were going to be more hawkish, you know, Governor Bailey said he's just going to emphasize that um, rate hikes um, in the near future are warranted and, you know, they will be probably, you know, carrying out a seizing of the um, bond buying, uh, bo sorry, seizing or reinvestments of maturing assets soon and things like that. Okay, so in my opinion, that's probably the most they can do. Okay, it's just to give more certainty um, to the market. Okay, provide the market with more certainty in terms of uh, more rate hikes and of course, the seizing of reinvestments of maturing assets. Okay, um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any new, you know, surprises coming in and things like that. Okay, so because of that, all right, um, there's still likely going to be volatility, okay, during the hearings, okay, probably going to be like one or two hours or something like that, okay, not really suggested you guys, I'm not suggesting you guys to actually listen through or sit through the whole hearing, all right, but I will try to look for the live stream link in case you guys are interested in it, all right, so um, volatility is expected, okay, but keep in mind, okay, um, any strengthening or weakening in the British power at that time, okay, due to whatever it's being discussed during the hearing <clears throat> will unlikely be sustainable, okay, because of the ongoing Russia Ukraine geopolitical tension, all right. And um, as of I think yesterday, <clears throat> I think the United Kingdom, okay, is actually looking into sanctions on Russia already, all right. So they are, you know, directly involved in this whole issue as well, okay. And I think right now, I'm not sure it has really ended, okay. There's actually um, a UN sort of like a conference with the other, you know, nations, um, leaders and things like that, okay, going on right now. So, you know, <clears throat> just hours before this meeting, uh, this, this currency call, okay, we actually seen like some movements in the market already. So it's really very, very, um, this is actually the, I would say at the moment, okay, at least for this week, I would say, all right, well, it has been going on for like two weeks, three weeks already, okay, but as of this, this week, the main limelight will be the developments of the, you are Russia and Ukraine geopolitical tension. Okay. Yes, monetary policy is important, is yeah, it's important to the country and things like that. But then right now we have a more pressing issue that's ongoing. Okay. If this issue were to deteriorate any further, all right, um monetary policy is going to be affected definitely. Okay, because the economy is going to be, you know, impacted and things like that. All right. So at the moment, you know, the hearing is probably going to be like second priority, okay? The first priority is still going to be how this whole tension develop and things like that, okay? So I wouldn't suggest you guys to trade tomorrow's um, hearings, okay? If you guys want to trade, you know, just focus on the news um, between Russia and U Ukraine and, you know, you'll probably be able to, you know, scout more. Although I personally feel that, you know, these moves are really very, very, very unreliable. Okay, very, very, very unreliable. Very, very short term. One, it can be, it can, it can last as long as just one minute. Okay, I've seen like, you know, during the past one or two weeks, I've seen moves that only last for like, last only for like one or two minutes. Okay, it's not even enough time for you guys to um, find out what actually happened, you know, which led to this whole big movements. Okay, so, um, Okay, we'll see how it goes. If the Bank of England, okay, did highlight any new details, okay, maybe like specifics of how many rate hikes by what denomination, okay, 0.25% or 0.1% or things like that. And or um, when will the, um, you know, the, or specifically the timeline of the cessation of reinvestments of maturing assets, okay, then I'll cover it again on, um, probably on Thursday. Okay, during the um, Traders Club um, evening call. Okay, but if you guys are watching this through YouTube, all right, then I'll cover it again on uh, next Wednesday. Okay, when we talk about pound. All right. So, any questions on this whole issue? Yeah. Okay. The UN meeting is still continuing. It's still con it's still ongoing. So it's um, 
yeah, I actually expect more volatility coming in. All right. Um, okay. If there's no questions on this, all right, then uh, I'll hand it over to Scott for his analysis on the DXY. Okay. Over to you, Scotty. All right. Thanks very much, Kimmy. And just get into the chart now. So the DXY did get a little bit of a lift with what happened overnight, overnight for the GMT plus eight time zone. And we can see that it is over the 96 flat support level. Let's just go to the one hour time frame and just get a situation status report on what is happening from an intraday perspective. I'll just reformat this just quickly. And we can see that previously price has come up uh, as high as 96.38 or thereabouts. And I would say that uh, just given the uncertainty, 9640 has been sort of recent highs. So that would be something to look for in regards to a potential target. Uh, an entry of around 9610 would be sort of what I'd be looking for. Just with everything that is going on, does seem to be just sort of looking through what's happening in markets currently. We, we do have, it's, we, we have that meeting right now. There's, there's an ebb and flow going on, but there's not a lot of certainty though, but it's it's definitely a, not a great situation that uh, Russia has breached the border of Ukraine, even though it's a bit of a complicated dynamic because there are sympathizers there with Russia that are in Ukraine and it's you know not a straight up invasion of Ukraine. There's sort of a little bit more going on there, but uh, it could easily escalate to something more. So caution needs to be shown. And just a quick glance at the news as well. We didn't have uh, much US news out because we had the, uh, I believe it was President's Day yesterday. So there was a bank holiday for the US. And if I just scroll down here, we did have FOMC Bo uh, Bowman speaking. Not a lot of catalyst there. It's just the usual uh, chatter about uh, the situation on inflation and interest rates. So there's nothing really that I noticed that was significant. We've got a little bit of news out today. We've got flash manufacturing PMI, services PMI. The CB consumer confidence is expected down a little, but a lot of this is all secondary to what is going on just really with the global tensions from this Ukraine-Russia drama. And then we've got the preliminary GDP quarter on quarter, 7% is expected. Uh, so I'm, I'll be looking at that. That's Thursday at 9.30 p.m. GMT plus eight time zone. But for now, it just looks like uh, people are positioning long the US dollar and something really dramatic is going to have to change to, to sort of pull that back, it feels like. Uh, just given everything with inflation, with the projection of interest rate rises in the US as well. So those are my thoughts there, but it's definitely bumpy on the way getting to 97, 98, just with everything that can quickly change if there's some sort of meeting with Putin and uh, uh, Joe Biden, it, it could quickly change, but it's just looking like more uncertainty is driving uh, the US dollar here a little bit higher. So those are my thoughts there, guys. And just again, stay cautious. We do have the call tonight as well from eight o'clock GMT plus eight. So make sure you hop on there. Now we've got Tuesday's Euro and Euro pound in focus now with Jin. And I will just hand it over to you now, Jin. Thanks for that, Scotty. Super distracted at the moment. I'm jumping onto a couple of trades and I'm stalking them. Um, so I'm going to keep this short and sharp. What's happened? Are they going to invade? Are they not going to invade? News is all mixed. What's happening now? It seems like, um, like Gim Hong was saying, you know, the economic news, the um, monetary policies, the actions from the central banks, probably going to take a little bit of a backseat at this point with the uncertainty happening in the Eurozone or in Russia and Ukraine. Um, Looking at the news first, just to do a quick recap, is that we don't have much news happening today, apart from the US PMI numbers, and you can see that we're not anticipating a big change there. So no real big surprises from the US dollar in terms of data at this point. We had spoken about the New Zealand dollar already from the RBNZ tomorrow, so refer to that. 
um, that one Gim Hong just told you about. We have the US GDP numbers quarter on quarter, looking to move slightly from a 6.9 to a 7%. And then on Friday, a bunch of Euro data to be released, but quarter on quarter German GDP numbers staying at a minus 0.7%. Not a big change happening or expected in terms of data at this point. So the focus still comes back to this headline news where, because the euro dollar is in focus, the euro dollar sinks to test 1.13 with the crisis heating up. So what that means is now looking at the euro dollar here, I was looking at this since this morning and my analysis had been changing constantly as I was preparing for this call is if I put in a line here at 1.3, first I was thinking is that if it doesn't break, we could see that bounce back up trading within this 1.13 to 1.14 region. But at this point, I would say that looking at how the Euro dollar is testing this 1.13 level, look for it to break, look for this candle to close below this support level. And then you can be looking for selling opportunities from this point towards that 1.12 support level. So I would say keep your stop loss again, keep it tight about 30 pips, take profit could be almost 80 pips. You're looking at a one is two, almost one is a 2.5 risk reward towards the downside I would give it a little bit of space. Don't look to sell straight away. Let it get to about 1.1287 or 8.5 before you look to sell. There's a lot of space towards the downside. So you can have that little bit more patience to wait for it to close. You can look at it on the H4 time frame or even to the H1. You can see that it's tracking lower already. So look for it to close below before looking to sell the euro dollar towards the downside, right? This is also with the overlying or overhanging um, concern from the Russia and Ukraine um, situation. If we do see it turn worsen, if it doesn't sound as good, then we could see that move accelerate as well. With that said about the euro dollar, looking at the euro pound, the last time we spoke about it, or well, the last couple of times we spoke about it, we said if it broke below that 8.4 level, we can see it test lower, did that. We look for it to bounce and test the 8.4 again to track lower, did that. At this point right now, it is at 8.316. Support level of 8.3 will be quite crucial. If I just zoomed out, I know it's going to be a bit hard to see, but if I zoomed out, you can see that hasn't tested lower for a very long time, even if I went to the daily time frame, right? You can see the last time we got to below this point, oh, actually we never got to below that point. So last time we got to this similar point was in last year, Feb as well. So coming back to it, I would say that I would not be very keen to sell the Euro pound past the 8.3 level. I think that 8.3 is quite a strong support. Look for it to come towards this point. It might bounce back up from this point. If it does bounce back up, it might not be because of the Euro dollar pushing higher. It might be because of how the pound dollar is moving. So at this point, no trade idea on the Euro pound H4 time frame. I would say look to see what happens to the pound dollar, especially as we go through it tomorrow. Um, I think we might see a bounce back up. A speculative idea might be to look to buy it up from this point. Very tight stop loss of about 30 pips. Take profit, you could be looking at almost 80 again. Almost one is to three risk reward ratio towards the upside for the euro pound. But at this point, hold your horses. Don't do anything on the euro pound yet. I think that the euro dollar, the yen pairs, um, the Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar tomorrow, a lot more opportunities across the board on those apart from the euro pound. Short and sharp, back to you, Scotty. 
All right, thanks for that, Jen. And remember, guys, uh, to please feel free to discuss anything that's looking like a potential trade idea or sharing charts within the LCMS Traders Club on the Ecofin platform as well. And again, uh, feel free to revisit the video as well. We do share it uh, as soon as it is published on YouTube uh, into the LCMS Traders Club. Thanks for joining us and hope to see everyone tomorrow for the pound analysis. Bye for now, everyone.